Schmack, I'm a gob. What's going on, people? This is a track by track donated uh, episode from Bjorn Run Nilsson. He wanted me to put this classic here. You know, I've had this album since this is the copy I bought as a young little child. Um, probably 77, 78, around there. You know, it's been out a few years. I had Bohemian Rhapsody on a single when it was new. But I bought this album because of Bohemian Rhapsody a few years later when I started buying albums. Um, and I have this right here. This is really cool. This is um, a CD version that brings a DVD that has kind of like um, montages of the band, you know, it's for each song. Kind of like my videos. Um, and it's a great album. I absolutely love this album. And he wants me to put it up against something I don't have on vinyl. Innuendo. This is the last, uh, well, I know Made of Heaven, but the last when Freddie was alive. And I really love this album too, though it does have some clunker shit. There's a couple songs on here I'm not too crazy about. But even the clunkers on here, his voice is unbelievable. This guy's body is ravaged you know, by AIDS, and, you know, as I understand, I've watched some documentaries, and Freddie would down some vodka and go and just fucking nail it. And even the songs on here I don't like. His vocal performance is just unbelievable. So, and I, th and I think this is their best album of the later stuff, after the, uh, you know, the works was okay, and uh, kind of magic, I mean, but, you know, and Miracle is really bad, though it had some great songs. Like, um, what was intended to be the final uh, Freddie song, Was It All Worth It? But, you know, because he thought he was going to be a goner, but actually he had enough strength to do another album. And that's what Freddie, like, you know, his wish, his dying wish, was to release as much music as he can. So, um, all right, so let's get into this. All right? Both great albums. And I can't see it to be a complete blowout. So we're going to start with, it's not going to lose against this because this is my all-time favorite Queen song, Death on Two Legs. A song that Freddie wrote about a manager they had and what a scumbag he was. It's just a snotty, killer, heavy, kick-ass song. And that's going against the incredible Innuendo. And it loses, and Innuendo loses, but Innuendo is unbelievably great. Huge Epic has kind of like a cashmere theme to it. Love the middle section with the acoustic and then the electric and the way Freddie sings it. It's just unbelievably great and it's sad to see it lose. But Death on Two Legs, it just can't be beat. All right, so one for Night of the Opera. All right, then we got Lazy on a Sunday Afternoon, which it's... Whatever. It's kind of like a goofy little tune. Uh, going against, I'm going slightly mad. I really like that one, though it's a weird song. It's kind of got like an atmospheric um, vibe to it. And, you know, and there's a video. I mean, these videos on the Innuendo album that they released, I mean, Freddie's got a lot of pancake makeup on him to, dis, you know, to hide his, you know, how ravaged he really was at the time. Very sad watching it. But the, fun, the video is kind of fun. It's goofy with the gorilla and the bananas on his head and, you know, and stuff like that. And I like the song. I do like the song, even though it's kind of not really in my wheelhouse. I do like it. Where Sunday afternoon, uh, Sunday, what is it? Lazy on a Sunday afternoon. I, I almost said Sunday afternoon in the park. Did I say that earlier? The Van Halen song? Probably did. But whatever. Um, I'm giving that one innuendo. All right. Okay, then the next song is um, In Love With My Car. Man, I love that song. And I and that Bohemian Rhapsody movie, they were making fun of them for writing that song. That song rocks, man. I absolutely love it. I think it's a great tune. A Roger Taylor sung song. That one's going against Headlong, another great song. I, I think that song rocks, man. But I'm going with the song, you know, I don't know, maybe... I've lived with it a couple decades more, but I've lived with this album long enough that I think it's legitimate when I say, in my own musical opinion, 
that I will put I am in love with my car over headlong and I love headlong another one for night at the opera all right then we got you're my best friend I love that song versus I can't live with you I love the the verses of that song I'm having a hard time then I want to find line pleasure and pain I know probably got the lyrics wrong uh, you're my best friend reminds me of my friend Eve that I've known since 1982 or 83, and we're still great friends. She lives in New York now, but she flies in sometimes, and I hung out with her. Absolutely love her. She's, you know, my friend to the end. And that song reminds me of her, because she's always like, you know, I remember when that song would come on the radio when we were kids, you know, a little sentimental thing between me and her. And I, th I believe the reason why me and her are still friends to this day is because we've never fucked. True story. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Maybe if we fucked back in the teens, we wouldn't be fucking friends anymore. And believe me, I wanted to fuck her. <laughs> oh, man, I hope she's not watching this. Because um, I've never torn her present. You know, you know, Eve, you know, back when I was a kid, I wanted to fuck you. Yeah. Uh, what's that going against? Um, best friend's going against, yeah, I can't live with you. I'm giving it to best friend for the girl that I wanted to fuck. But I don't want to fuck you no more because, uh, you know, it's too weird now, you know. Um, all right, you're my best friend. Okay, then we got 39 versus uh, Don't Try So Hard. Now, that's a song I don't like, but damn, Freddie's vocals on it. And the lyrics, too. The lyrics are kind of like you can kind of see sense. You know, it's he's facing the end of his life in the lyrics. It's very emotional. But music-wise, it just doesn't really do it for me. And 39, my God, do I, I worship that song. You know, Brian May with the acoustic. I just love the hell out of 39. I'm giving it to 39. In the year of 39, fallen tears on the name. All right, then we got Sweet Lady. Good, hard, rocking tune. I like that one a lot. And what's that going against? Um, uh, all God's People, right? Something like that? Yeah, All God's... No. Uh, Sweet Lady's going against Ride... Ride the Wild Wind. That one... You know, I... I it's... It's not really my thing. And again, Freddie sounds great on it, but musically, it's kind of, eh. I mean, it's up-tempo and stuff, but it's kind of got this, I don't know, I know it ain't a drum machine, but it's kind of got this this feel to the song that doesn't sound like them playing. I don't know, that's how I feel about it. And musically, structure-wise, eh, Freddie's great on it, but I'm um, giving it to Sweet Lady. Okay. All right, then we got, or maybe it is a drum machine. Who knows? Uh, Seaside Rendezvous. Now this one is goofy. I mean, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. It's kind of like in between. And it's kind of like a throwback song that sounded like it was record a song that was written like in the 40s and stuff, pre-rock and roll. And what's that going against? Uh, All God's People. Now All God's People is them, you know, it's like Queen doing gospel. You know, it's it's weird. It's but you know what? I again I feel the same way about both songs. I don't love it, I don't hate it, but I'm gonna give that one a day, uh, night at the opera because I like it more. Alright. Okay, then we got oh the prophet song, the dark horse, the masterpiece on this album. I know Bohemian Rhapsody gets all the credit, but man, Prophet Song to me is more I don't know, more masterful to me. I mean, and I believe me, I love Bohemian Rhapsody. I, ever since I was a little kid, I bought the 45. But man, there's something about Prophet Song, man. It's just an epic song. What is it, like eight minutes long? It's fucking awesome. And what's that going against? These are the days of our lives. I swear to you, that was coming out of me. I was not playing the CD. I know. You thought it was Freddie Mercury there. That was me, actually. Impressive, huh? Um, I love the song. I, uh, again, the video, it's sad, man. I mean, especially Yan when he goes, I love you. It's so, 
mm, it hits me hard, you know. And but um, God, I can't I can't give it to that one because it's going to get the profit song, and that song would win against several songs off this album. But my track by tracks are luck of the draw, so you know, profit song is just too amazing. All right, then love of my life, don't you hurt me. Uh, against Delilah. Delilah is a cute song. I don't really love it, though. Love of My Life, I love. I just think it's just gorgeous. A gorgeous song. I love even the live version more where Freddie gets the crowd to sing it. You get, I, man, I'm telling you, fur rises. I get the goosebumps. When I see any footage of him doing it live and he makes that crowd sing it, it's just him and Brian May on stage. Gorgeous. And I'm giving it to that song because I still, I love the studio version too. Just prefer the live version. Wow, man. Neither of the races, I, I think, already won this. All right, then we're going against, um, then we got uh, Good Company. Good Company is another one of these, uh, it's another one of these songs that sound like it was written like decades before. And uh, Brian May sings this one. He sings two songs off this album. I like it. It's a nice, cute song. And what's that going against? Uh, Hitman. I'm a Hitman. That's total heavy metal stuff. And, you know, not just because it's metal and stuff. I think it's a better song. I'm giving finally something again to Innuendo, man. It's been a while. Jeez, it's only had one so far. Now it's got two. So, yeah, it's already lost, but let's keep going. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody versus Bijou. Now, I could be wrong, but I think... In Spanish, that word ba is pronounced bayou, which means orgy. There you go. Your, your, your Spanish uh, class is over today. Um, you know, and I love bayou or bijou. I love that song. It's mostly an instrumental, but Eddie, uh, Freddie comes in like toward the middle, and he's very emotional. It's just a beautiful intro to the last song that's kind of long. I think it's like two, three minutes for an intro. But it really does set the mood for the final song on here. It's gorgeous. I love it. But Bohemian Rhapsody, it's, it's a classic, man. It's, a, it's just an amazing song. And it's weird how it just like exploded again. It was a big hit in the 70s, but I think it even became bigger in the 90s after Wayne's World put it out, and that was after Freddie died. But before Freddie died, he did get to see that scene, you know, with them in the car jamming a Bohemian Rhapsody, and he absolutely loved it. And, uh, yeah, it's sad, you know. I mean, Eddie, uh, Freddie couldn't... Why do I keep saying Eddie? Freddie didn't live to see, the, you know, the, the rise of Queen again. In the states, I mean, they always remained big in Europe, but after Hot Space, woo, it went down over here, and it never really recovered till after he passed away, unfortunately. Um, Bohemian Rhapsody, man. Uh, then we got the final song, which is "God Save the Queen," which is pretty much a cover, right? That's a cover of the the anthem of England, maybe. I don't know. I know it's something they didn't write, but it's Brian May instrumental, and it's great, but. It's going against the show must go on. And that song is gut-wrenching, amazing. You know, that is the song that Freddie said, look, you know, I wanted to end, you know, my career with, you know, was it all worth it? But, hey, let's do this one. And it's, I love was it, uh, was it all worth it? That great song, great heavy song, and lyrics are very deep. But I think this one's even better than um, was it all worth it. It's just... An amazing damn song. An amazing performance from the whole band and Freddie just pouring it out, man. I've got to give it to Innuendo. So Innuendo got three. While Night at the Opera got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. Um, Bjorn, Ron, uh, Nussel, thank you for asking for these. I got this thing backwards. Let me no, I don't have it. I have the back backwards. All right, there you go. So, what would you pick? Are they? <laughs> what would you pick out of these two albums? Um, your track by tracks. 
I mean, this is too classic. I mean, to me, 70s Queen was the best. You know, best era of Queen for me. And I'm a huge fan of all that stuff. You know, and my favorite albums always fluctuate, you know. News of the World was it was once, but now it's Queen 2. And I liked Sheer Heart Attack one time the best. Queen 2 is my favorite Queen album. But I love this. Yeah, at, at one time, this was my favorite too. This, News of the World, Queen 2, Sheer Heart Attack. And I think at one time, I even thought the first one, which is the most metal Queen album, was my favorite. But I just love Queen, man. I, you know, they took a lot of chances. And a lot of those chances I didn't really, I couldn't really sink my teeth into. But the chances they took that, like 39, for example. Ooh, I was chewing on that. I was chewing, 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 man. Like delicious bubble gum. Anyway, thank you all, everybody, for watching. If you'd like to donate, I got a PayPal in the description below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And click the little not notification bell. So, stay frosty, listen to Black Sabbath, and smack a gob. Now you can kiss my ass goodbye.